What's up guys, it's Joe the Pro here, back at it again with another video. Before this video starts, please drop a like on it, hit subscribe, and hit the post notification bell. Welcome back to the channel. What we are going to be doing today is teaching you how to install a blackout switch on the 8230 pin spotter. Now, there are actually two blackout switches that are responsible for actually blacking out the pin spotter. So looking at the front here, you can see there's a micro switch on that table rod and there's also a micro switch on that table rod as well. So there's one on each side. So basically what happens here to black out the machine, if, a, if there's an off spot pin and the table comes down on it, okay, so say the table comes down on the pin, it's actually, these rods actually contract a little bit if it comes down on something so it doesn't break any of the gears or the motor. So what actually happens is this table lifts up a little bit, which when it lifts up, it activates that micro switch. It's actually pressing the button on the switch now while it's resting, but when it re when it's lets go of the button there, that is what blacks out the machine. So whether it trips this one or this one, it will black out the machine. Well, we've come around back now, and I want to show you what actually happens when the machine blacks out. So, this, when the machine blacks out, it actually trips this breaker here. This switch on the chassis is actually a breaker. What happens is when those micro switches are released, it will trip this breaker into the off position until somebody comes back and flips back on. Okay, well, we are going to run a test real quick to determine that our machine is actually still capable of blacking out because this table wiring has not worked in years and we are going to have to install all new wiring through our table. But before that, we have to run a test to determine that our machine is capable of blacking out. So what we are going to do, we are going to keep our S and T switches off to make it so our sweep and table stay still. We are going to turn our B switch on and I have already unplugged the back end motor. So what that's going to do is just turn our deck light on. Okay, so the machine is now on technically. So now we are going to run our test to determine if our machine blacks out. So we're going to come up here to the P box and with the assistance from my phone, we are going to use the light to look inside our P box. Now, as you can see, this is everybody's worst fear in any kind of mechanical work. So this P box has quite a few wires going into it, but the wires that we are concerned about is the very bottom row, okay? And you're going to go one, two, three term terminals in, and that white wire right there, that is actually an old wire from our table. So we are going to tap into that for our blackout switch, okay? So first to run our test, we are going to take a piece of wire, okay, and we're going to touch that terminal in there, and then we are going to use the other side of the wire and ground it out on the screw down here, and by touching both of these at the same time, that should black out our machine. So now, we're going to carefully make sure we're touching the screw and touching the white wire, and now it should black the machine out. And it did. So now our machine is blacked out. So we can now conclude that our machine will black out once we have the table wired correctly. Okay, so as you can see, this machine is blacked out because it tripped the breaker. So all you have to do to reactivate the machine is flip it to the on position. Okay, but in this case, we are going to turn the power off and we are going to pull the plug while we wire our table. All right, guys, so now we've come back out onto the lane in front of lane 12 here, that which we are all familiar with from our weekly live streams. So I've already pre-made the wires we're gonna need for this project here. So this very long one here, this is the wire that we're going to use to run from our P-Box into our table, all right? This wire is approximately eight and a half feet long. So we're gonna take that. This wire here is going to run across our table raceway from each side of the table to connect our two terminals, okay? And this wire is approximately six and a half feet long. All right, and now these, these two wires are the same size, approximately, of course, and they are about three or three and a half feet long, 
These are going to go from our table to each of our terminals. Okay, and last but not least, we have our two ground wires for our terminals on the table rods. The power to the machine is still off. We are back in the back now. And what we are going to do is take off our covers to our raceway here in the table. So I'm just using a pair of pliers. But if you want to, you can get a 3 8 little wrench. It would probably be a little easier, but they should come right off here. Don't lose the nuts to it. Okay, so that's one. There's supposed to be two, but the other one broke off. So there usually is one there as well. But we're gonna take that off, okay? So there's one, and now we just do the same thing on the other side. And this back one is also broken off over here, so we just have the one in the front. So we're going to take this off eventually. There we go. And now we can lift up on our cover to remove it. And I just place them up top here on the A-frame. Okay, so I've already lost my not there it is. So we're going to keep these two nuts right here on the table motor stand here. Okay, so now with both of our raceways open, what we can do is take our longer wire, the nine foot long one. This is the one. One thing I'd like to point out before I go into the P-Box is any wires that you're putting into the P-Box, you're going to want to put electrical tape on the top of the terminal and where your um, wire cover is broken to expose your two wires because you don't want this to short out any other wires in your P-Box. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our taped end that's going into the P-Box and we're going to run it up here through the front. So you can see where my old KL plug is for the table. It's just wrapped around here, but it is routed through this little harness here. So we're going to route this wire the same exact way up to the front. So now we can go up to the front, take a pair of needle nose pliers with you to help you get that new wire connected into your P-Box. Again, make sure the power is disconnected from your machine. Okay, so now we're in the front. I found my wire. So give yourself some space here. All right. So now, I, the way I've been doing them, you route your wire through this open hole here in the P-Box. Give yourself some space and just let it hang there for a minute. So now we're going to go back into the P-Box. Find your wire you're taking. Again, it's going to be that white wire on the very bottom row of terminals, the third one in from the left. Okay, so you're gonna take your needle nose pliers and just pull it, all right? So now that we have that disconnected, you can just put it off to the side. It's not gonna hurt anything because there's no power going to mine anyway. But if your tables are still powered, which most of them aren't anymore, but if they are, just put some tape around that. Okay, so now you're going to take your new wire and connect it to that same terminal you pulled the white one off of. Okay, so I am connected. Make sure it's on there good. All right, now you can take this excess wire, kind of, I try to kind of clean these up as much as I can, but I just route it along the bottom, up through the side because there's open area there, and then out through the side hole. Okay. So now carefully shut your P-Box, make sure there's no wires sticking out that are going to get pinched when you shut the door to the P-Box. All right. So now that that's shut, you can pull this excess wire back down towards your table. So it's like that. You still want a little leeway there. All right, guys, so now we're back down in the pit. We've routed our wire into the P-Box and connected it to the terminal. So now what we're going to do we're going to start feeding this right into the table raceway through the front. So get it in there. And then you're going to connect it to a terminal under here. So what I've been doing is you're actually just going to take a pair of needle nose pliers, granted that your table wiring is already shot, because 
you can actually cut all this wiring out of here because it really doesn't matter anymore because I don't have the pindication anymore, so that's useless. And this is going to take over our blackout switches. So all this other wiring is kind of pointless to have in there, but I will do that at a different time to not make this video any longer. Okay, so now, let me get my light again. When you move this wiring, you're going to expose a terminal. It's kind of right on top of the tube that goes to the four, five, and six pins, okay? So this terminal here, it has three terminals sticking up out of it, and you're going to plug your, so it's that terminal right there, you're going to plug this wire that you just ran to your P-Box into the back of that terminal right here, okay? So now that that's on there, just kind of try to keep that cleaned up there. And it helps if when you strip your wires, it helps if you strip, give yourself some room to get past all this stuff here so it's not all disorganized, which it already is, but you don't want to make it even worse. All right. So we're just going to kind of get that in there there. All right. Make sure you have some wiggle room up here for when the table's moving. All right, that should be good. All right. And then later, if you get a broken wire, you have some more to work with so you don't have to replace the whole thing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is take one of our shorter three and a half foot wires that we have right here. We're going to go to the same terminal that we were just on and we're gonna connect this wire to the outer terminal here. It really doesn't matter which ones you connect them to, it's just personal preference for me. So I'm going to connect this wire to the same terminal. So now you should have two wires on that um, three ring terminal there. And this wire is going to go to the micro switch, okay? So you're going to connect this wire coming from that terminal to the right side of your micro switch. So your micro switch for your table should have the two male terminals on the top and the one ground on the bottom, okay? So you're gonna, with it mounted that way, you're going to mount this wire to the right side of that micro switch, all right? And now we're going to tuck that back there and then run it like that. And we're going to secure our wire just like this with the zip tie. Okay, so now, where are my needle nose? Okay, let me go, oh, they're right here. Okay, so now, as always, when you use a zip tie, it's the same thing every time. You always cut the excess part off to make it look clean. All right, now, that we've connected that, we're going to need a ground wire going from the bottom of our micro switch to the side. All right, so we're gonna take one of our very patriotic ground wires. We are going to get an Allen wrench. I couldn't tell you what size it is. I, I know it's very small. My sizes are scratched off there. So we're going to plug this ground wire into the bottom terminal and then we're going to connect it to this bolt here that's holding on the micro switch, okay? So I'll just put it behind the nut there and tighten it up. Okay, so that micro switch is all set to go. So now, if I power our machine on, but I'll get myself out of here first, be careful when standing on the curtain rod. Don't put too much weight onto it. Okay, so now if we plug our machine in and turn our B switch on, so our machine should power on, but now if you lift up on this side of the table, it should black it out because it will activate that micro switch. Ready? And it does. So now we know that that switch is good to go. Okay, so obviously our power to the machine is off so we can stay in here now. Um, now we're going to work on the opposite switch. Now we're going to 
repeat the same process we did on that side to this side, except we don't have to run that long wire, okay? So we'll, all we have to do is locate the same terminal that we used on that side. So there's another three ring terminal right here. There's two wires that are on it, but they don't even matter anymore. You can cut these wires right out of here. So we're gonna take them off of there. I'm gonna cut it, tuck it down in there. And cut this one. You can cut all of these actually. This is old. All right, so that doesn't matter anymore. We'll clean that up in a minute. Okay. All right, that's good for now. Okay, so now that we have our opposite terminal all cleaned off, now we're going to take another three and a half foot long wire. Whoop, there they go. I lost my ground wire. I'll have to go and get that. But we're going to do the same thing on this side that we did over here. So we're going to connect this wire to the side here. And plug that in there. And then we're going to run it up to the right side of our micro switch. Okay, right there. And then, like we did on the other side, it's the same steps every single time. We're going to kind of run our wire just like that, give it some wiggle room for when the table's moving, and secure it, okay? With a cable tie. The zip tie in mechanics terms. Cut the end off, and now we have to go back down over here and pick up the ground wire that I dropped. Okay. And we're gonna plug our ground wire in the same way we did over on the other side. Okay, so plug it into the bottom of the micro switch and then, okay, this is already loose, I guess. So then we're going to plug it in behind that top mounting nut and tighten. Okay. So make sure you snug that up real good so the wire doesn't come loose. Okay. Okay, so now our last step here, this is kind of an optional step. So this all depends on how the existing wiring is inside your table. So you may or may not have to run a wire connecting from this terminal all the way around back to our first terminal in the table over here. So we can actually test this. We can power the machine back on. We have to turn our breaker back on. So if we lift up on this side of the table and it trips the switch, great, we're done. But if it doesn't, then we have to run a wire across the raceway here. So I'm gonna lift up to test. And I hear the switch clicking, but it is not blacking out our machine. So that means that we have to run a jumper wire from this side of the table to the other side. Okay, so can turn our power back off. Okay, so luckily I've already prepared a wire for this because out of the 12 lanes here, 11 of them, I have had to run this wire across. So this is pretty simple. You're going to connect it to this terminal here, that three ring terminal, tuck it in the table raceway, go through the pin deflector in the front, the same way that thick black wire is going, and then connect it on this side back to that three ring terminal here. So now, if you plug this in, now we have three wires plugged into that. All right. So now we can tuck that all back in there as best we can, which is kind of a hassle. Okay, so that's good. So now we're gonna tuck our wires into the raceway here. So now let's power our machine back on and make sure that that micro switch gets tripped. All right, so I'm gonna lift up on the back of the respot cell here and when it activates that switch, it should trip the machine blacking it out. And it does. 
All right, so now we're done. So now all we have to do is put our raceway covers back on. Okay. All right, guys, so just to review, now that we have our raceway covers back on, both sides of your table should black the machine out if they're activated by the micro switches. So if we lift up on this side, should trip the machine. And if we lift up on this side of the table, it should trip the machine as well. Okay, so now we're done. All right, guys, so now before we end the video, I'm going to show you how to properly clear a blackout call. So as you can see, we have a pin off spot. So the machine is going to cycle. Now the table's coming down. And since that pin is off spot, it lifted the left side of the table. And when it came down on the pin, before it could break anything, it blacked the machine out because that micro switch is now activated. So in order to clear this call, what we need to do, we need to grab our motor crank, head up to the table motor. Okay. Unplug it always before inserting the table crank. And now you're going to spin the crank counterclockwise and that will force the table to come up. You want to have it come up about six inches. Okay. So that should be good. And now it is safe to plug the table motor back in. The machine's still blacked out. And what we will now do is go into the machine, or you can use your pin fork, whichever you prefer, and clear the pin that is off spot. Okay. And now, once you exit the machine, all you have to do to make the machine resume is flip the breaker. Okay. And that's all that's to it. All right, so now to conclude, what the blackout switches do is prevent your respot cells from bent, getting super bent up from coming down on off spot pins. This will save you and your bowling center on a ton of parts, a ton of money, and a ton of time fixing old respot cells that are bent. I'd also like to thank Mike Vandenberg and Sean Saldana for showing me how to wire these blackout switches into my machines at my center. They came to visit me uh, probably about two weeks ago now, or no, it was actually last week. Anyway, they came to visit me because they watched my videos and they were interested in my machines. And that was one of the things they showed me while they were here. So I thought I'd share this information with all of you. And if anybody has any questions, please comment them down below. Thank you all for watching. And please don't forget to subscribe for more content. Twitter, Instagram, links in the description below. Drop a like if you enjoyed this video. And please subscribe. And always remember to do it like a pro. We'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good day.